himself. So that was that. As far as the treasury was concerned, they confirmed what you've been telling us, that until 2020, when they reckoned the um, deficit, um, and irrespective of whoever gets in power, these, these cuts will carry on, and you've got to respond to them. I now come to the two reports that... Um, no, I'd like to get to your question. Well, right. Well, many, 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 well, what I'm, no, what, no, what, 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 what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, um, just bear with me a second. In relation to the um, rapid response uh, risk assessment program, within this very far reaching report, it states that the assessment process involves a comprehensive approach to research and requires expertise both from within and outside the fire service. In 1998, a study was undertaken by ENTRA, an outside organisation, on behalf of the Home Office to cover risk criteria. Using national statistics over a period of time, the study stated that there is little difference in death rates between attendance times of 1 to 5 minutes and 6 to 10 minutes. Another uh, set of data, um, an American set of data, used the international criteria and again confirmed the probability of death of persons involved in fire through the same conclusions. There is a little probability of death in response times of 6 to 10 and 1 to 5 minutes. The fire service concluded that taking all this research taken into account, Merseyside Fire Service intend to get first fighting responses, uh, resources to incidents with ten, within 10 minutes. Now, I use the 10 minutes because at Hoylake, I asked, the, you mentioned Wallace uh, was closing. I'm not saying for any reason at all, it was likely to close. Yeah, it likely to close. I'm, I, I'm not trying to get any clap about this at all. And I asked who was going to respond to Wallace and you said Burton Head within, and you said within 10 minutes. You definitely said 10 minutes. So that, so right away, it brings 10 minutes into the risk criteria. Now, as far as as far as the Cheshire County is concerned, concerned I, I spoke to two officers at Cheshire County Council, and I said to them, well, my own thoughts were about Cheshire County Council was that in all of the discussions about Willow Fire Station, what fire stations? One station appears to be flying under the radar and going unnoticed, namely Heswell. Although a, although a charge on Willow Council taxpayers, this station also helps out, out, out at Neston, which comes under control of Cheshire County Fire Service, and that's why I contacted their head office. Initially, as part of their 2012 consultation process, Cheshire identified five potential sites. They served it up in, in 2014. Four are definitely firm, but the one at Heswell is remaining, the option still remains open. When I said to the person I spoke to, what would happen if Heswell closed? I then got a reply, can I call you back? So mm. anyway, when I, uh, the person then said that they've contacted Merseyside Fire Authority and there's no, there's no prospect of them closing Heswell initially at all. But however, and these are their words, not mine, they intend to seek a legal agreement to make, this co uh, uh, to make it a formal contract. Now, in relation to... to Just stop you there. The, 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 we already have a section 13, 16 of Eames, but uh, who were you speaking to from Cheshire? No, is it, you, you, you talked to someone in the County Council there, you said? No, 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 the fire authority. No, I spoke so, to the senior members. As I said, I spoke to two senior members of Cheshire Fire Service. You therefore would know that we already have a long-standing section 13, 16 arrangement with them. What they said to me was that in the event of uh, 
um, in the event of the agreement lapsing, what they would do, they would build a station at nesting and they would use a second fire tender from Ellesmere Port to service to service Nesta. What I'm coming to in the in the discussions so far, we've all been looking at uh, Greasy and Upton. As far as I'm concerned, using the ten minute criteria, this brings Hesel into the consideration. And bear in mind that both Up Upton and Hesel are existing fire stations. Why in heaven's name do you want to sort of, sort of choose briefly? I've already answered the, the question in, in detail. The, the existing 1316 arrangement that we have with, because of what we're doing over in Nosley and St. Helens, it becomes more, it becomes more operation, the, the operational imperative around the 1316 with Neston becomes more important in one sense to us, because we need the cover from Cheshire over in St. Helens and Nosley. What you've got to understand is, we cover all of Merseyside. I cannot specifically favour West Wirral over any other area within Merseyside. And that is the, that is the reality, and the position is exactly as I've explained earlier on in the presentation. The report to which you refer, the rapid report, is 10 years old now. That's been superseded by two reports from Green Street Berman, commissioned by DCLG and my colleague Mark Rowe. I believe has a copy of the, uh, certainly the FBU have drawn some, uh, drawn some data from that report, which does <coughs> correlate and confirm the relationship between increased response times and deaths, not just in fires, but in road traffic collisions. That is the most up-to-date research, and Mark may well refer to that if he comes up to speak. But in terms of the Cheshire position, that is exactly as I've explained to the meeting earlier on. Okay. There's a lot of kids in here. Yeah. And, and I cross that road over there. And like an uprooted and greasy junior school kids um, cross that road from there. And I'm scared that there might be an accident and because it's so fast. And it's just an accident waiting to happen. The uh, bring your attention back to the, uh, the incident slides. You see there was 590 incidents in Upton, 200, uh, 220 I think from West Kirby. You put them together, you are probably still looking at between two and three incidents a day on the 24 hour period. That is not, uh, that is not a, a significant number of incidents. The issues that you're raising around the, uh, the dangers from fire appliances, well, they, you know, we have fire, uh, fire stations all over the county, you know, and, and clearly we, uh, the, the risk from a fire engine is no greater than the risk from any other form of vehicle traffic, and, and, and that is a reality. Um, from your own um, perspective, you said yourself that you don't feel greasy um, if you are passed up those to the Zoom station, you'd rather have some blame, but because um, it's been identified by the council as being a a place to be built, you've got, you've got to look at it. But I don't think that the um, Planning Commission uh, has looked into it properly because there's several great ones of buildings in the village and they have their own um, planning criteria. Um, so maybe that would be a leverage for you to, to push for some things. I think if the, again, just to, as the gentleman who spoke first, uh, until such time as Wirral, formerly Wirral officers, or indeed the authority, whatever point that is, until such time as the Greasby Library site is no longer an option, then we cannot discount that. 
the minute that it is discounted, then we can pursue the other the other options. I, to, just to reassure you, I, I, I'm having regular conversations with officers and will the, the will officers, as the gentleman has, uh, has, has said previously, have been written to as well. As it stands, you know, the, the position of the will officers is as, as it's always been. The site of Greasby falls within there. The, there is no planning limitations in relation to a fire station. The, uh, just to reassure everyone, you know, we're, we're, we're saying the same thing, say, the fact is, the fact is, until such time, I would happily pursue, I would happily pursue another option. But as it stands, we don't have one. Because, because the library option is in the ownership of will, sits within existing planning, and therefore, until such time as it isn't, then we have to pursue that. And that, that is the reality. Now, it may be that at some point in the future, if the authority approves the recommendation to, do, to go for the merger, then the planning committee would then, at that point, that's, that's the point I made right at the beginning, that is your opportunity to make those very arguments. We're just not the right people to make them to. Talking to the to the council and the planning people, surely they can then look at the plan to see if cultural heritage comes into it at all. And that's exactly what they've done, and their view is that the there is no planning restriction around the fire. I can't. I just keep saying the same thing to people. It's that, that I'm, I'm, I just have to refer you back to what I'm saying. They speak to the world planning officers yourself, and they will tell you the same thing. Why aren't they here? Because it's not their consultation, it's it, it ours. Yeah, you've made a big thing about operational response times. My colleague here who's doing the, the signing, is anyone using the signing because she could do with a break? <laughs> is that a... Ten minutes to get past the rest of the, the, the tough man. The modeling software is based on actual incident responses from Upton and from West Kirby to the and, and therefore on the West Kirby station area clearly for, for a number of those those like this incidents. So what it does is it looks at the actual response times, which is where we get the averages from. So all I can say is, is those figures that, that the, that's not me that comes up with them, it is the, uh, it's our data analysts. Those figures that they come up with are based on actual responses that have been made in the, in, in the, the past year. You said earlier that you cannot cover West Kirby Fire Station probably at the moment. Is that true? Is that what you said? I said on occasion. On occasion, so for shifts at a time, yeah, what I said was, point being, you cannot cover it, you must be covering from Upton. We are, you're on the So yes. you are covering from Upton. That's what yes. you just said. On so occasion, on occasion. That. Yes, I've not, you just and I've not said it isn't. And I've not said it isn't. And that option is in the authority report. So I've not tried to hide anything from anyone. That option is there in the report. But what I have said is continually, is to cover West Kirby from Upton rather than Greasby will increase the response time. And what we're trying to do, 
and we're trying to change the situation for the better in terms of response. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, you said you're going by computer planning. Uh, and nobody's ever driven the room. So I'll tell you what, I'm 66 years old. One of your officers meets me in the car park tomorrow morning. I will run to up to faster than you can drive. <laughs> Let me be clear. Let me be clear. When you say that no one's driven the route, like clearly the response times that we see on the presentation are from actual journeys to incidents. So clearly, clearly somebody has driven the route. Uh, thanks, Al. I've been put on the clock, not too much of your time, so uh, I'll be brief. I'll declare my interest. I'm Mark Rowe. I'm the Brigade Secretary for Mayside Fire Brigade Union. I've now attended all of these meetings. And what I would urge you to do is not to be, uh, I appreciate that, but there's some important points that need to be addressed here. Um, and believe me, I'm not here as a, chief, as a, a cheerleader for the Chief Fire Officer. The issue is the attendance times and the facts and figures that were quoted before when we talk about one, one to five minutes in the, in, the, in the, well, it's a relevant point if you just let me finish. The issue is, is that attendance times are significant, they do count. I'm a 27 uh, year firefighter. There's other professional fire officers in this room who have all, and this isn't shroud waving, this isn't um, emotional blackmail. We have pulled people from rooms, and it's not just us that say this, Northwest Ambulance say that if he'd remained in those rooms uh, for a longer period, they wouldn't be alive now. That is the fact of the matter. Now we hear, absolutely, I hear you loud and clear, fantastic turnout at all these meetings and I don't think anyone could misinterpret what you're saying. I attend the authority meetings and I'll certainly be making uh, your views known as well because it, it's been a fantastic turnout. But what I will say is what we're tending to do here is let the people responsible for this off the hook completely and this is the political party. It doesn't matter whether you're a Labour voter, if you can your voter. They've smashed the fire and rescue service on Merseyside for over a decade. Don't let them off the hook. Everybody here, none of this can go ahead if the council that refuses to release the land. And it really should be. I'd like to know why there's no council here and yeah. representatives. <laughs> why are they here? Yeah. Uh, parts of the pl who, who are the people are responsible to release the land? Why haven't they attended this consultation? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Chief, which is based on the appropriateness of the recommendation in the context of operational response. You are absolutely correct, as I've agreed with you and a number of speakers now, we've got up to make the same point. If the council elect not to release the land to the authority, then this is all academic. The issue we have is, of course, we have to go through that process to get to that point, which is the point I've made now on more occasions than occur to be taught. Really. At the end of the day, we need to lobby the councillors and say we don't want that land released. Which has been my point from the outset. This is not a planning issue. This is about this is the Fire and Rescue Authority's consultation around operational response. You have effectively a second bite of the cherry, which is a planning application. So yes, absolutely, that's the that that is the position. I honestly don't know how the planning. <laughs> There would, there, there would be, I assume, if you, there would be a, a period of consultation and a job in which people could object. I'd assume that's what happens. I don't know what's the answer. We don't have a lot of faith in that going our way. Good evening. Um, I'm Wendy Clements. I'm one of the councillors. Councillor Tom Anderson is up at the back. We were holding back because we wanted to give people a chance to speak. I want to say first that we're all very glad that we've got a Burnside Fire and Rescue Service. In another part of the country, one of my family was very glad of the Fire and Rescue Service. So let's be glad that we've got them. Let's appreciate what they do for us. 
Wait, so yes, yes, so let me breathe. <laughs> let me breathe. The point then is, Dan has told us what he needs to do to uh, keep people safe. He's told us that he needs to make a station merger. The only problem we've got, and I think he's got two, but he's in a difficult position, it shouldn't be where it's currently looking to be. That's why, as your councillors, we've started a petition which is saying to the council, please do not give this land to the fire residents. Let's find a way around this problem. We're here, we've got the contact, you can get hold of us any which way you can, and we've done our best to circulate this to everybody who agrees to. But we are sure that there's a good job being done here. Thank you. I'd like to appreciate the council. Thanks very much. We've only got five more minutes, so I'm, I'd like to give the people sort of a chance to ask a question. Thanks. Dan talks an awful lot about operational readiness, correct? And the fact that obviously moving the station this way helps West Kirby. He's never actually told me, maybe you've told the residents of Upton, what effect moving the station down here has on the extremity of the church. Upton wood church site. I'm assuming that it's going to take a bit longer to get to them. And how many houses are we talking about? Are there more? If you look at the, the maps that I showed previously, what you'll see is, is the, the coverage from Birkenhead Fire Station in to, uh, to Upton. But I've made it very clear from the outset, if you think back to the slide where I had the existing average response times and then the predicted averages for the merger. Clearly it's going to take longer to get to Upton and West Derby. Made that clear from the outset. There is no outcome here that is going to improve our response times. That is for sure. But even if we just close West Kirby, the response times in Upton will increase. It is harder to give a definitive prediction because you, you're almost trying to map back from an incident if you like, in, you'd only have one fixed location realistically to map from, if you like, from the, say, the West Kirby fire station back to incidents in Upton. So it is going to increase the response times on Upton's area. Probably the easiest way to describe this is, beyond West Kirby, there is the River Dig. Beyond Upton, there is Birkenhead, there is Wallasey. Beyond Birkenhead, there is Liverpool City. All of those assets are available to move this way. There is nothing to come in that way. I'm really oversimplifying it, but that's that's basically where we are, where we're into. Uh, you keep on saying that you're responsible for the safety of the people of Wirral and Merseyside. Which, shall we get closer? Sorry, you keep on saying that you're responsible for the people of Wirral and Merseyside, and we can all appreciate that. You're talking a lot about response time. Um, you've said that you'll make the recommendation for the fire station at Greasby, even though it isn't ideal for you, you've already admitted that, and it's not ideal for us. So why won't you make the recommendation for the Pump Lane site? Because in order for me to do that, the Greasby library site no longer, can no longer be an option. So I suppose to, to, to talk this through in simplistic terms, in order to make it an option, my view as it stands is, and as bureaucratic and as nonsensical as this may appear, I would have to go down the route of recommending the library site for it to then be knocked back, either at planning or by the council.